Just before we came on air, I spoke to Milo Yiannopoulos. He's a senior editor at Breitbart News, and there's even been speculation that he, too, could find his way into the Trump White House. I began by asking him what exactly alt-right means. Well, it's a very young, vibrant, exciting new movement of conservatives in America. They are populists, they're nationalists, which is not a dirty word in America. Uh, they care about immigration, they care about trade, and they really hate political correctness. And you would describe yourself as one of those sort of cheerleaders. Of no, the, the media is, is desperate to crown me the queen of it. All I've ever done as a reporter is give them a fair hearing, give them a fair crack of the whip in the press. Um, for that crime, I have been called all sorts of awful names. Uh, but... but they're too extreme even for you, though. Uh, no, I wouldn't say that. I just We're fellow travellers on some issues, but, you know, they're, I'm very pro-Iraq, I'm very pro-Israel. There are all sorts of, you know, points of difference, I think. Do you think your erstwhile boss, uh, Steve Bannon, um, chairman of, of Breitbart and Trump, now Trump's chief strategist, do you I think he has horribly regressive uh, attitudes. He's been described by some liberals and anti-Semite, a white nationalist. Have they got that wrong? Uh, well, Breitbart is a company staffed almost entirely by Jews. I am a gay Jew, and he made me into a star. He, you know, flew over to, uh, you know, flew over from America to hire Raheem, uh, Raheem Kassam to run the London office, who is a, you know, brown-skinned Muslim. Um, this stuff is ridiculous. What a lot of Brits don't always understand is how ugly and uh, terrifying American politics can be. The name-calling can be absolutely extraordinary. And, and lots of Brits... And name-calling by Breitbart. I mean, that is ugly. No, so look no, at these no. headlines. Well, no, you're Would asking... you rather your child had feminism or cancer? Well, that's not Steve, There's that's no Martin. hiring <laughs> bias against women in tech. They just suck at interviews. That's, that's also... extreme. That's ugly. No, it's not it? extreme. They're my headlines. They're not Steve's. Um, and, How you know, are they not would, extreme? Would you rather your, fa your child had feminism or cancer? Well, Women agree with me. I mean, 7% of British women describe themselves as feminists. Just 7. It's only journalists who are still feminists. Feminism is actually versus, about... Feminism, versus, feminism, yeah, feminism, feminism is about feminism equality, is about, of course. About, you know, they you say don't one believe thing, that. You're redefining say, it. Well, no, they say one thing and they behave very differently. Feminists right, so, like to say, when they're on the defensive, oh, don't you believe in equal rights? But the way they actually behave is nasty, vindictive and mean. Do you believe in equality for women? Do you course, believe in equality for women? Of course, any normal person does. I want right, women so you're to actually a feminist, then? Well, I, I would describe myself as a second-wave feminist, but the modern version of feminism this ugly, uh, sociopathic, vindictive, mean, spiteful third wave feminism, which, right. you know, which is defined by misandry. Okay. Women agree with me, not with you. Donald Trump has talked about governing for all Americans. Mm -hmm. And yet Breitbart, his chief, the chief strategist now, has these extreme divisive headlines. Do you I don't understand why I don't people agree. are fearful about no, I, the no. divisions that are being caused? No, I don't that. agree at all. Actually, what we do is we do something quite rare in journalism these days. We publish satire, we publish provocation, we publish all kinds of journalism that, that traditionally would have been left-wing. You know, the sorts of dissident, mischievous... Uh, you know, thought-provoking kind of stuff where you're like, well, wait a minute. Okay. And then you read it and you think, oh, actually, well, that's changed my mind. Right, isn't so... It, isn't so it bizarre? Don't you find... No, I want, don't to put, you, I want to put some of that satire to you. I want to put some you of your own satire to you. Wait a minute. News, I know, this, I know, you, I know you want right women to log off the internet, suppo but we are now in the Channel 4 News studio. Right you have to allow me to speak. You said that women offended online should log off. You said, yes, we'll certainly let women onto the men's internet a few times a year, as long as you follow a few basic rules. You can't... You said... You can't wait, let me finish. You said you mass Muslim immigration must stop or people will know real rape culture. Are we supposed to just soak that Am up I and wrong? take it as one big joke? Am I wrong about joke? that? Am I wrong about Answer that? Answer me. Am I wrong Are we about supposed that? to just soak it Am up and take that? it as one big joke? You're supposed to treat it um, as it's intended and not wrench it from context. You know perfectly well that it is a provocation designed to make people think and perhaps to make them laugh. The guy who is behind all this provocation, the guy who hired you and turned you into a star, as you put it, is now chief strategist in the White House. What does mm -hmm. it mean that someone who delighted in offending people, who delighted in having a laugh at Muslims and women, is now people. at the centre of power. I delight in offending people. I think the grievance brigade, victimhood, you know, the idea that hurt feelings are some kind of special currency, I think that needs to come to an end, and America agrees. What does that say about you? What does that say about the guy who is now <laughs> the chief strategist? I think... Should Steve Bannon care that people are offended? No, um, because America has been ruled for 30 years by people who are too worried about what other people feel, not what other people think and too worried about feelings versus facts. For decades, America has been run by the Grievance Brigade, by social justice warriors, hand-ringers, feminists, Black Lives Matter, all these groups that are preoccupied with feelings first and facts later. 
They spread you know, conspiracy theories and propaganda about the wage gap, campus rape culture. This stuff isn't real. What does it and say no, about you, though? What does it, it say about Steve Bannon, who's now chief strategist, that you don't care about offending disabled people, ethnic minorities, women? You don't care about that. I don't care he about doesn't care about that. I care about facts. I don't care about your feelings. But I thought you believed in a post-fact universe. So who? That's one of your quotes. Is it? What's we live in a post-fact era. It's wonderful, you said. Yes, what, what I meant from that was um, just telling the facts are no longer enough. You now have to be persuasive and charismatic and interesting and funny. Just telling people things isn't enough anymore. Milo Yiannopoulos talking to me earlier.